evidence, you could say, of just how much things can change. But we want to talk more about why they changed and look beyond, you know, the humanitarian crisis that was sold to the world by Western leaders to talk about some other reasons for this change of heart. And to help me do that, the always outspoken Asia Times correspondent, Pepe Escobar, joining me from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Pepe, I want to get your take on this relationship between Gaddafi and Western leaders over the last decade. Libya's oil supply certainly did not dry up. So what do you think has specifically changed to make him go from hero to villain? Well, oil deals in the past decade and also collaboration on the war on terror. Very important. From the point of view of um, the U.S., Gaddafi was the perfect ally. But then, last year, in October 2010, Gaddafi's chief of protocol defected to France. He got in touch with French intelligence, and they organized basically a coup to start in Benghazi and then transfer to Tripolitania. This is how the war started. It was last year in France in October 2010. Pepe, let me have you backtrack, though. You said that for many years, Gaddafi was the perfect ally for the U.S. I mean, I I've got to disagree to an extent. The U.S. talks about, uh, you know, human rights violations. In 2002, thousands now of people were massacred under Gaddafi's rule. And that didn't stop them, though, from meeting with him. Um, so why do you say he was the perfect ally for a time? Look, the hypocrisy is being reverberating the galaxy today, actually. <laughs> as long as the oil deals were there, even if they were with the Italians and not with the Brits, even if they were with the, the Chinese but not with the Americans, it was okay. Because at least he was doing deals with Western and foreign companies. And as long as he was... Uh, collaborating with the war on terror, including this guy who is now the military commander of Tripoli, Abdel Hakim Belhaj. He was captured by the Americans, then he was sent to Guantanamo, then he was sent to Libya. And he was in Libya as a prisoner for four years. And then he was liberated by Saif al-Islam himself, because he said, no, we need some kind of reconciliation in this country. So until, last, until October last year, there was nothing wrong with Gaddafi. Remember, Tony Blair going to the desert to, you know, hail the big chief, Silvio Berlusconi kissing his hand. The pictures we saw a few minutes ago, they tell the story. The problem is... For the Brits and for the French especially, don't forget, these are the people who redacted UN Resolution 1973. They wanted more penetration, more deals, and especially they wanted NATO to have a beachhead in Northern Africa. This is the big picture, the big strategic question. The Americans also wanted it because they wanted an AFRICOM, the Pentagon African Command, a base in Africa. Libya would be perfect. And NATO want, wanted the Mediterranean to be a NATO lake. With an independent Gaddafi, that was impossible. So this is the story that you, we won't see over the next few days because people are commemorating like, this guy's gone. Remember, this guy also was gone. Remember, and this big guy here, I bought all these in Russia. Wow. <laughs> so, exactly. So the bogeymans are gone. So who's the next bogeyman? Iran. We saw last year with that the Mexican Fast and the Furious plot. This is a never-ending thing in terms of from the point of view of the Pentagon, the long war, their denomination, not mine. And from the point of view of NATO, we want to control the Mediterranean. And that's it. The next stop is Syria. I mean, quite a collection there, Pepe, of those uh, boogeymans. Very, very but interesting. In Russia, by the way. <laughs> in Russia, I love it. Um, uh, but I want to talk specifically about um, just what's gone on uh, since March, since this case was first made to the world, basically, but also to the Americans by President Obama, um, by Western leaders. Humanitarian mission. They need our help. No ground troops. Um, do you think, I mean, we played a soundbite earlier of Prime Minister Vladimir Putin saying, you know, who's... Uh, who was given this authorization to, to change the mission? Uh, they said from the beginning, we don't care about Gaddafi, we just want to help the people. And then all of a sudden, Gaddafi needs to step down. Now Gaddafi's dead. The latest report saying a U.S. drone may have had something to do with it. Was this the intention all along, or, or did something change along this path? It was. It was NATO's plan A all along. If we follow the story and if we follow what NATO has been saying for the past six or seven months, the only thing that they care about was to snuff out Gaddafi. Then they so why didn't they tell us that then from day one? 
big <laughs> look in real politic it doesn't work like that you always have a cover story cover story in this case was r2p responsibility to protect civilians and a no-fly zone over libya that's the text of the un resolution why the BRIC countries abstain brazil russia india and china the top four because their diplomats studying the text of 1973 at the un they concluded that was an open-ended commitment that this could become regime change on day one and it did and everybody knew it did the germans also knew it would be regime change and nato has been saying from the beginning we want to capture or kill Gaddafi. two days ago hillary clinton told students at university of tripoli we want to kill or catch up capture Gaddafi. that was the plan all along but plan b which was that invasion that conquered tripoli they were very lucky because they they had a pincer movement fighters trained in qatar and the uae and those fighters trained in the southwestern mountains the berber mountains they had a pincer movement and they captured tripoli and the key brigade which was the camis brigade they disappeared just like iraq in 2003 nobody knows what happened to camis brigade because they didn't fight back certainly so, uh, i i remember hearing um you know, when this all first started, it's going to be weeks, not months. That certainly didn't turn out to be the case. Want to get your take, Pepe. Last question, real briefly. What's next for Libya? Civil war. There's no question. Uh, two, one month ago, I wrote a story saying there will be two civil wars. Gaddafi loyalists against central government and the Islamists against the central government. Okay, now it's going to be one civil war. Everybody that was left out of this arrangement, which means a lot of people in Tripolitania, uh, People who will resent <laughs> the TNC once they see what kind of regime they're going to impose, which we're going to be not a democracy at all, because they're already scrabbling among themselves. And Tripoli is being taken over by militias. And if these Islamists are out of the picture, they're going to start a guerrilla against the Hamid Karzai-style government in Tripoli. So welcome to civil war for years to come. Wow. Certainly, as, as we look at how things have shaken out in, in countries like Egypt, where uh, another leader has fallen in a different kind of way, not a lot of cause for optimism right now in terms of really. what's I'm ahead. Not really. I'm very sad for the Libyans, uh, in fact. Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar joining us from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you.